ESPL Boxing's YouTube channels. Like to be joined by a very happy Danny <laughs> after the fight. Um, but yeah, both of our bets have come in. Basically, that's why we're both smiling at five thirty in the morning, whatever time, whatever time it is. Danny, um, we've just seen it, seen finally seen Elspeth Spence versus Terence Crawford. Um, bit of a one sided fight in the end. Three knockdowns, stoppage in the ninth round. However, that's what we both kind of predicted. Remember in the way in reaction video yesterday, I've just rewatched it. You went for round 10, I went for round eight. Um, so look, it's maybe the result was expected, but it was maybe more one sided than was expected. Give me your thoughts on, on what we've just seen. Yeah, it was fucking a lot more one sided than I expected. Um, I've always been Crawford and the whole Crawford Spence thing. I thought the stoppage was like a possibility, um, but I did not predict that. I gave Spence the first round. Um, it was a fairly nothing round. It was a cagey round. They were both sort of jabbing. Spence landed a couple of body shots. I gave him that, and then I gave everything else Crawford. Um, I thought it was like I don't want to be like hyperbolic or whatever, but given like the scale of this fight where they were in pound for pound rankings I think that's potentially the best performance I've seen like I can't think of he he made Spence look leagues below him leagues below him like there's surely there'd be no desire for a rematch after that um and I remember after the Inouye Fulton fight I didn't think there was anything that could happen in this fight that would change my mind on pound for pound number one. I think I'm gonna have to rethink that. To be honest, I think Crawford and <laughs> UA has spent four or five days as my pound for pound number one. I think that's yeah. I give it to Crawford after that. Yeah, I think Crawford. Um, look, considering how big this fight was, you had you know pound for pound status on the line, undisputed status on the line, um, undefeated status on the line as well. Both fighters were went were undefeated going into this fight, and the how many years this fight had been have been in the works for and the fact that when it's come down to it, Spence has won it so convincingly. Like I thought he maybe lost the first round, but I kind of thought he was just feeling Spence out. Maybe he lost, maybe lost another one round. Um, but obviously those three knockdowns meant that, you know, Spence was never really going to win on the scorecards. And I just think Spence, the last two or three rounds with the kind of the state of his face and he just ends up kind of like swinging quite wildly, I thought, which was just a bit, it was a bit... It was sad. almost hard to watch. It was almost hard yeah. to watch. Yeah, it was just kind of like, it, it looked like, it just kind of looked like two elite fighters, one of which had maybe kind of, you could tell which fighter had led the life a bit more, which fighter had made the weight easier. Um, why do you think it was so one-sided? Do you think it was the weight? Do you think... Crawford's just a better fighter. Do you think it would have been one side if the fight happened three years ago? Why was it so one sided, Danny? I think the weight's a massive part in it. Um, I think 147 has become a very, very tough weight cut for Errol Spence. Mm. Uh, I also don't think this is the absolute best version of Errol Spence. Um, again, it's as you say, you're bang on. Um, it's strange because Crawford's older, had more fights. Um, yeah, he looks to be still well in his prime, almost getting better fight by fight. Whereas Spence, I'd say his best days were three, four years ago before the crash. Um, I know we said that the crash itself um, sort of inspired him to like lead the life a bit more. Where Crawford's just been living the life. And it's once you get into your early 30s, your mid-30s, where you start feeling what you've done in your, your mid-20s. And, um, if the fight happened four years ago, I mean, as I've always been Crawford, but I think it would have looked a lot more like the fight I imagined in my head, like Spence winning a couple of rounds, clearly maybe hurting Crawford, I don't know. But yeah, um, I think stylistically, Crawford proved to be, like he's always been known for his counter punching, but the way he's able to counter spin, like that was the second knockdown off the ropes. Spence threw the left hand. Oh, that was unreal. Unreal. Like, to do that to Errol Spence. Like, that's the stuff, like, Josh Kelly and that used to get plaudits for doing the, like, three and 20 journeyman, and he's doing it to, like, the number five pound-for-pound pound fight in the world. Just unreal, honestly. Yeah, I just think the accuracy of Crawford's punches, the amount of time you would jab Spence and Spence's kind of head just kind of go like that, like you see in, like, you kind of see in cartoons. The amount of times that happened, I thought, was remarkable. Um, yeah. Just got a couple of questions for you, Danny. I can appreciate it's getting late. Um, 
I've got two questions. Um, what happens next? I agree with you. I don't think Errol Spence will want a rematch. Um, I don't. I think. To, I think one thing about the fight tonight was there's a lot of respect for each other. Um, so I don't think Crawford's gonna. I could be wrong. I don't think Crawford's necessarily going to want the rematch and just kind of beat him up again because there's no hatred there. I think Crawford would no. maybe rather um, fight Jaron Ennis, who's a contender at one four seven, move up to one five four. Maybe see if he wants to move up super lightweight and fight him at one four seven. What do you think is going to happen next for Terence Crawford? Um, I will. Spence will definitely move up. I think that's a given at this point. I would like to see, in terms of like a legacy perspective, um, like Crawford fight Ennis next. It would almost be like that Mayweather fighting Canelo, although I think this version of Ennis is a lot closer to what his prime will be than that Canelo. But it's just like for your legacy and your resume, because I think er Ennis, by all accounts, looks most likely to be like the next great welterweight after Crawford hangs them up. So if he can have a win over him and then potentially move up the one five four and challenge whoever's top dog then, be it Jamel Charlo, be it someone else if he stays up at super middle, that's what I would like to see for Crawford, um, get that win over Ennis. Not that it's a foregone conclusion that he would beat Dennis um, and then maybe look to move up the one five four. Yeah, it's definitely like a legacy fight. I think that there have been some fights in the sport who have dominated their era and maybe gone into the era that's coming behind them. And Terence Crawford has the potential to do that if he faces if he faces Jared Ennis. Um, I feel like kind of if you look at like the heavyweight situation now, and it might be a bit silly considering what's going on now, but consider Tyson Fury beat Klitschko, which was the era behind him. And then yeah. if he was to go on and beat um Joshua Wilder, which he has done obviously in Usyk as well, he's then beaten the current guys. And then to, to, to beat the best of two eras is, is I think is pretty special if Terence Crawford can do that. Yeah. Um Jaron Ennis, 31 and 0 now, 28 stoppages, so a big puncher as well at the weight, and 26 years old. There's around nine, 10 years difference in age between them. Um, maybe that fight could happen. Look, maybe that fight could happen next. Jaron Ennis has fought recently. It's if the, you know, it's the chance to fight for the undisputed championship. So yeah, maybe that's a possibility. Um Danny, final question, a bit of a wild one for me, but um, obviously had some massive stars in attendance tonight, one of which was Floyd Mayweather. Um, what do you make if I said to you that uh, Terence Crawford at 147 could have been Floyd Mayweather's toughest test? I wouldn't argue massively with that. Definitely not. What yeah. wins does Floyd have at one four seven that are better than Terence Crawford? And Definitely I think, not. Definitely yeah. not. And I think it's important not to go for the top. However, how good it looked. Terence Crawford is just such an elite fighter, and Floyd Mayweather obviously was you know the best of his generation. But I'm looking at Terence Crawford. I'm looking at Floyd, May, Floyd Mayweather's resume, and you can, you can possibly debate with wins earlier in Mayweather's career and wins yeah. in the middle of his career, but Terence Crawford would have been one of his toughest challenges at welterweight, in my opinion. Um, just a thought, yeah. maybe a fancy fight. We can do a video one at another date, but we just there aren't there aren't many wins in boxing better than Errol Spence at the minute. What active fighters have a win, a better name on the resume than Errol Spence? I can't think of many. Like a and prime like, Errol Spence or a close to prime Errol Spence, and a stoppage and dominant stoppage win as well. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I can't help but be a little bit disappointed. I would have preferred to have seen a more competitive fight tonight, I'll be honest. There was no part during that fight where I thought El Spence was going to win. Um, yeah. In the same way, there was no part during Tuesday when I thought Stephen Fulton was going to win. <laughs> so Remind me, it reminded me at a, a bit at a stage of Fury Wilder too. It was like you're just watching someone take a beating. Like, even as like me, who's like, normally if you've got a bet on, you're like sort of hyper worried the other person might find a way to win. At no point I did I think Spence had a chance of winning the fight. No, it's what it is. Um, final question. Um, in true Owen McKendry fashion, do you think Edward Spence might retire? No, he won't retire, surely. No. <laughs> um, I, you, know, you know what? I think he could do. I think he could do. Mm, you know when you think about it, like what fights are there that are that big for him? See, the, have you seen them? They were flustered around the idea of Canelo Spence. That's people that that's like that's well and truly off the cards now. Yeah, 
one five four of like him and Charlo, even if he did come back, they're like best mates, not gonna fight him. Tim Zhu, hard fight, not much money. Josh Kelly, like, I'm joking. Um, but uh, but um, I just I I'm not. Look, I don't. We're not in a position to tell someone to retire. But I, it wouldn't surprise me if Errol Spence did. No, like he's, as I said, he definitely had his best years. You know what I mean? It's just mm. he, he's been a unified world champion. Like mm. it's just, and, and the reason you would normally continue in a stage like this is for financially lucrative fights, and there's none really that, yeah. that would scream out to me. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in the coming months, Danny. Been great to have your company. This evening, been a long evening. It's very late. Looking forward to going to bed. Um, thank you for joining me. It's been look, it's been a massive event, hasn't it? it would have been great if other members of the team had joined us, but yeah, maybe maybe next time. Um, Danny, thank you for your time and your effort as always, and I will speak to you again soon. No worries, mate. Cheers.